Hello people, welcome back. Today I'll show you how to make bialis, or also known as cebulasz in Polish. I know I'm butchering the pronunciation here. These little breads are quite similar to bagels. The only difference is that the hole doesn't go quite all the way through, and the middle of them is filled with an onion and breadcrumb mixture. And they're also quite easy to make, so let's do it. Get yourselves a tray lined with parchment paper, some digital scales, a bowl, a dough scraper, and a digital probe for measuring your dough temperature and your water temperature. Now I know my kitchen is about 20 degrees Celsius, so I'll be aiming for a dough temperature of around 25 degrees. And to achieve that, I'll need my water to be around 25 degrees also. So for the ingredients, you'll need your tempered water, strong white bread flour, the onion and breadcrumb mix for the filling, some seeds of your choice, I use some linseeds, black sesame seeds and some poppy seeds here. You also need salt, yeast and one egg for brushing. Alright, so before we start, make sure to clean down and let's go. Get your bowl, add your tempered water and disperse your yeast in it. You want to hydrate the yeast a little bit so it's not quite dry when you make the dough. Once the yeast is nice and hydrated, you can add your salt and give it a good mix because you don't want any salt flakes in your dough, it will be very hard to work them in. And now we can add our last ingredient, the flour. In terms of baker's percentage, it is a 58% hydration dough. And I will make a future episode explaining all baker's percentages and hydration and all that. But for now, all you need to know is that this will be quite easy to work with. So first just give it a good mix in a bowl, just to hydrate all the flour. And once you've mixed it all together nicely, you can tip it out on your board or on your table and start working it. Now like I mentioned earlier, this is quite a dry dough, so it's not going to stick to your hands or to the table. And it will be quite easy to develop the gluten as well. So far it's basically like a simple white bread and if you would like to see how to make a simple white loaf click on the link in the right hand corner because I've made a video on the simple white bread. Now if you have the luxury of owning a mixer just pull all your ingredients in a bowl, add the dough attachment and mix it for around 4 minutes on medium speed. But if you're doing it old school like I am here then watch my hands I'll show you my preferred kneading method. I've found this to be the most easy and efficient way to develop gluten. So I press the dough down and forwards with the palm of my right hand and I fold it underneath with the fingers of my left hand and repeat the motion. Once you've done this a few times it will become like second nature and you can go faster and faster. All in all it should not take you more than 5 minutes to have sufficient gluten development for this dough. And once we're ready, we can shape our little dough ball and put it in a bowl for its first proof. But before we cover it and proof it, we need to take the temperature. Knowing the temperature is important because then you can decide the plan of action in case it's too high or too low. I was aiming for about 25-26 degrees Celsius and that's what I got. So I'll just carry on as I was. I don't need to adjust my proofing times or anything like that. So cover your dough and leave it to proof for 45 minutes and then we'll give it one fold. It should visibly puff up to about one and a half times the size. Now to fold it, tip it out on your table, smooth side down then stretch it out lightly and then pick up one corner, stretch it, fold it into the center and go around in a circle until you've reached the point where you started. By doing this we are creating more layers in the gluten structure and also we are equalizing the temperature so it's not too warm in the middle and not too cold on the outside. And always remember to place your dough ball back in your bowl, smooth side up. Now cover and proof for 45 more minutes. 
and at this point we can start preheating our oven 250 degrees Celsius, no fan, or 230 with fan. On the second proof, the dough should rise considerably. So slice and puffed up, looks about done, we're ready to divide it. This recipe makes 800 grams of dough, so I'll divide it into 10 equal pieces of 80 grams. It's wise to use the scale here because then you get equal pieces. Now scaling the dough is quite easy, you just cut off a little piece, place it on your scales. If it's too big, take a little bit off, if it's too small, add a little bit, and just keep repeating until you run out of dough. Now scaling's done, we can pre-shape our dough balls for the final proof. To shape them, we use the same technique as for the fold. We take a little piece, fold it into the center, going around in a circle until we reach the point where we started, and then always prove them smooth side up. You don't want to fold them too tight, because otherwise the surface might rip. For the final proof, we'll get a tray, dust it with flour, and place all the dough balls on it, just make sure to leave enough space between them. They will almost double in size. I would suggest dusting them lightly with flour and then putting on the cling film, otherwise it might stick a little bit. So they look about done, so now for the most important part, the shaping. So get your tray lined with parchment paper, also get a little bowl of flour. We'll use this to flour our fingers to prevent the dough from sticking to them. Now to shape the BLE, dust your fingers with flour, pick up a dough ball and press your thumbs into the center and kind of stretch outwards a little bit. You don't want to make a hole. You want to leave a little membrane just at the bottom of it. And you can turn it around in a circular motion to get an even stretch. It should kind of resemble a donut. Now watch my hands as I'm doing it. I mean you have 10 pieces so there's room for error. And as always, handle them with a light hand. Don't be too rough on them. You don't want to squeeze any of the fermentation gases out. You're only changing the shape of the dough ball, you're not really pressing it. To be honest, this was actually my first time making these, so I'm quite chuffed with how they came out. I would suggest leaving a little bit more space between them, otherwise they might stick together as they bake. I just didn't realize my tray was so small. Now once the shaping's done, we can start with fillings and toppings. Crack your egg into a bowl and add a little splash of water so it's not too thick. This will give the BLE a nice golden crust and will also make the seeds stick better. Now to the filling. This is quite traditional, the onion and breadcrumbs, but you can fill it with whatever you like really. You can even make them sweet if you like. You don't want to add too much, just a heaped teaspoon will be sufficient. Now we can brush it with our egg and water mix and sprinkle them with seeds. Could have done this before filling them, but it doesn't really make a difference as far as I'm concerned. Brush an even coat of egg over the surface. And the last step is to sprinkle on the seeds. Now because they are quite small, they will take only 8-10 to 10 minutes to bake in our really hot oven. Always check if the bottom has baked properly, if not then flip them upside down and continue baking for 2-3 more minutes. But if they look done, get them out, and this is an optional step. 
brush them with some malt and butter. This will give them a nice shine and also add a little bit more richness. I would suggest cooling them down slightly on a wire rack, but they are quite nice while they're still warm. I don't think you need to add anything to them, they're good on their own, it's like a little meal in a bun. So as you can see, it wasn't that hard was it? And as always, if you have any questions, write them down in comments, and if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe because I'll be posting every Wednesday. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.